Hi, this is Varian from Checks It Out and in today's 10 minute video, we're going to take you through the steps of building a PC. Just to be clear, this isn't some sort of speed building video where we build a PC in 10 minutes. Although that does sound like fun. First, let's start with the parts. This PC will mainly be used for video editing, but also a spot of gaming. For the processor, we're going to be going with AMD's Ryzen 3900X. While not necessary for gaming, it will give us lots of cores for rendering. The motherboard will be the ASUS TUF Gaming Plus, an entry-level X570 motherboard. To cool the CPU, we have a Corsair H115i RGB Platinum AIO water cooler. We're not overclocking, so an air cooler would have been sufficient, but I really like the aesthetics of the water cooler. We're going to go with an NVIDIA 2060 Super RTX graphics card. It's not a top of the range 2080 Super, but we don't need that as most video editing applications do not greatly benefit from the graphics card. This should be more than enough for gaming though. The Corsair RM850X should give us more than enough juice to power this PC while having a silent fan when idle. We're going to go with 32GB of 3200MHz Corsair RGB RAM to support the video editing and for a bit of bling. For storage, we've got two 1TB SSDs and a 500GB NVMe. We'll have the SSDs as a Windows slash applications drive and a project drive. The NVMe will be our scratch disk. Finally, we're going with Cooler Master's H500 Master Case, which has amazing airflow. We begin by grounding ourselves so we don't static zap any sensitive components. I've got an anti-static band and an anti-static mat that are connected to the power supply, which is in turn plugged into the wall but not turned on. We set the motherboard onto the motherboard box and lift up the lever. The CPU is heavier than you might expect, so handle with care. Remember to match up the little triangle with the one on the motherboard. Let it slide into place gently. Put the lever back and we can move on to installing the RAM. Open the catches. Be sure to check your motherboard instructions on which RAM slots to use. Make sure the notches line up. Give it a firm push. And repeat with the next RAM stick. Next, we'll install the M.2 NVMe drive. Make sure to use the standoff screws that come with the motherboard. Slot in the NVMe drive at a 45 degree angle. Press in, then screw in. This motherboard has a heatsink over the M.2 slot. At this point, we would usually install the air cooler, but since I'm going to go with an all-in-one water cooler, I'm going to leave that till later as I don't want a heavy radiator dangling from my motherboard as I try to install it. We'll take the covers off the case, remove the power supply shroud, and put the I.O. shield on. Just give it a push and it should click in. Then we install the RGB fans that came with the AIO cooler on top of the case as intake fans. We want more air intakes than exhaust to create positive air pressure in the case to keep dust out. Before we put the motherboard in, we want to make sure the standoffs for the motherboard are in place. Slide the motherboard in, making sure the ports line up with the IO shield. Then screw in. Once in, we can start to plug the various cables into the motherboard as this will become more difficult once we put in the CPU cooler and the graphics card. USB 3.0, HD audio, USB 2.0, front panel wires. Note that the triangle on the RGB connector is the positive pin when plugging in. And finally, connect the fans. Let's get the SSDs in place. Screw in the support feed. Press into the rubber mounts. And repeat. Plug in the SATA cables. And connect the other end to the motherboard. Next up is the power supply unit. We're going to put it in fan facing down so that it will draw air from outside the case. This PSU is modular, so we can choose only the cables that we need. Plug in the ATX power, 8-pin ATX, don't forget the 4-pin ATX, and SSDs. 
on the other end, connect the modular cables to the PSU. We'll also get the PCIe power ready for the graphics card. We put the power supply shroud back in place and pull any cables through the opening. Next, we'll set up the CPU cooler by attaching a couple of Corsair ML fans to the radiator, which will go into the front of the case. I didn't want to waste the original RGB fans on this as they will not be visible from here. And now we will remove the front case fans to allow the radiator to be attached. All the fans at the front will be working as intake as this provides the best cooling and creates that positive pressure. Finally, we attach the pump block. Note that the plastic cover should be left on as long as possible so as not to mess up the pre-applied thermal paste. Remove the pre-installed Intel brackets and replace them with the AMD specific ones. We then loosely attach the screws and the clamp to the brackets. Lower the pump block onto the CPU and screw in. Tighten the screws finger tight but not too tight. Hook up the fan, RGB connections, power, and the USB connection to the pump. Now for the graphics card. Open up a couple of slots, and remember to remove the protective cover before plugging in. Don't forget to open the catch, push in, and screw in. Add power and we're good. Turn the PSU on. And now for the moment of truth. Yes! Hit the Dell key to get into the BIOS and awesome, we have post. I also decided to get an RGB card support from up here for some edit style. Another late addition was a Wi-Fi card for edit connectivity and Bluetooth. Screw on the antennas and position. Finally, we need to do some wire management to get from here to here. We'll need some velcro straps and some wire ties. Use these slots to hold the wires in place. Tie the wires together and snip off the tail. Use the velcro straps for bigger bundles. A bit of wire management later and we're ready to close the case up. Close the case up. And we're done. Oh, don't forget to set your memory to the rated speed in the BIOS, otherwise you'll just be running the clock stock speed. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, don't forget to leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button. Thanks and out!